कैन यू समराइज द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ हू कैन परस्यू एम बी कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन It should and be a choice branch rather than a chance branch. Because so I could, we have been talking about all the pros and the glamorous side of community medicine, but I know there might be the challenging side too. So can you uh, like uh, take our audience through what are the cons or the challenges of uh, taking up community medicine as a career? Whatever work you do, you may not see it, right? Like I mentioned at the beginning. So you kind of feel lost sometimes. Sir, uh, like uh, pursuing uh, MHA or MPH or MBA, uh, post MD community medicine, either in India or abroad. What do you think about it? I think it's um, dependent on what they want to do. If you just do an MPH there overseas, and then uh, I don't know if you don't collaborate internationally and you just do go about the same kind of roles, it's not adding too much to your uh, expertise, right? If you really do see, if you are just doing certain roles if you are only teaching initially but you did an mba and you started uh, your own company or you worked with hospitals that makes sense so it's about what you want to do uh, to make it really worth it so hospital administration if you want to do you do it with your public health experience it adds 100% just for the sake of it saying uh, in the same role again if you apply with this degree they'll be like why is it mattering to us we'll still give you the same pay scale so it's a you know person to person situation to situation i unfortunately i cannot generalize it if i really had to i would say yes uh, but you need to expand your scope you need to be out of your comfort zone you need to be looking at roles which have uh, things beyond the borders of india yeah so sir you have been working as a assistant professor in medical college so let's talk more about teaching careers mm. so how does teaching career in community community medicine look like and uh, like what is the salary and the promotion from entry level to the higher position you go yeah so it depends on inis versus uh, state colleges uh, inis again you have to do 3 years of sr ship then you will get into an assistant professor post so total track till you become a professor is about 14 years approximately whereas in state colleges it's one year post sr ship you will get it as assistant professor approximately 9 years to the best of my knowledge pay scale again uh, it is pretty uh, i mean again six figures like i said then it will go into uh, some 1 1 and a half lakh to about 2 2 and a half lakhs in the later stages so it's kind of stable within that range 1 2 2 and a half to 3 lakhs so that's how the usual progression goes and uh, that way it's a 9 to 5 it's not something that you'll have like INIs have a summer vacation and a winter vacation also. So along with your school kids, uh, <laughs> you can also go on vacation, things like that. So it's a very, uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of teaching, research, field uh, activities that you need to take care of and things like that. Uh, so those who are really inclined toward it, it's something that uh, they can also do. Alright, so sir, can you shed some light on the roles of biostatics in your field, both academically and practically? sure so that's the reason uh, i started this company statifix med basically for biostatistics my field uh, i mean actually in the medical field i would say not even my field um many people students pgs faculty even struggle with biostats it's something they run away from i know even in, during my third year i used to not like it because they say you know people become doctors because they don't like math i don't think that's entirely true maybe some parts of it thing is um, your research papers journals everything is dependent on your results tables which has uh, odds ratios and confidence intervals and uh, what not survival analysis so if you are not able to interpret it properly you are not able to understand the research and you will not be able to apply it to your patients so it's super important because what you do what research you do what research you read is what you apply on patients so since that's the case it's super important and uh, what we do is to ensure that you uh, make it very simple for people to understand so that we are able to uh, interpret it properly and we are able to uh, give tables in such a way that you can present in a conference or in a journal paper and at the end of the day doctor is satisfied with whatever is there and there's less of hassle of trying to do your own statistics so that's the reason uh biostatistics is something that i really got into because india has 1.4 billion people and 
with such a big thing we should be the leaders in research we should not look to the us or the uk so that's the reason we have to bring our own guidelines and those guidelines not always translate here so yeah that's why i feel it's super important you cannot ignore biostatistics because data is currency nowadays you cannot uh, mess with that whatever data you have that is the truth you cannot just say in my experience or whatever that is like the lowest level of evidence highest level is where you have done proper uh, high level systematic reviews meta analysis and things yeah all right sir so sir we have been talking about all the pros and the glamorous side of community medicine but i know there might be the challenging side to it so can you uh, like uh, take our audience through what are the cons or the challenges of uh, taking up community medicine as a career yeah so i would say one thing is um, you kind of sometimes not sure what exactly i'm going to do with this information there is so much information like uh, there are so many variety of topics sometimes you are not able to connect the dots like if it's a specialty of clinical specialty you will know this surgery this thing medicine exactly here you are reading about uh, social i know now i'm able to make sense of it but when i was going through it i was like why am i reading all this why does it even matter Uh, sometimes uh, i mean how much ever hard you try comparison may creep in and you feel like there is glamour there grass is always greener on the other side i've come to terms with it i'm very happy now with whatever i'm doing uh, there are sometimes i'm human so i would say that is one of the things where you feel whatever work you do you may not see it right like i mentioned at the beginning so you kind of feel lost sometimes okay so what am i doing here I'm giving a health talk nobody seems to pay attention they go home now what i don't know if they really did what they did sometimes things happen behind the scenes so you kind of uh, get less motivation to do things so i would say that is a con and uh, yeah i think another con would be the perception among students the books and the experience they get during ug what i got during ug was so uh, difficult for me to comprehend the amazing things public health is all about actually it's really amazing but uh, people run away from it because of the material or uh, whatever it is i don't want to point fingers at one thing i think it's an overall systemic problem because if student really understood how amazing this is uh, i would be i think this podcast is also one of the reasons i wanted to motivate students to take this up and uh, it should be a chance it should be a choice branch rather than a chance branch because i took it by choice because i had that kind of interest and that's kind of the thing sometimes you have to push yourself like okay they, those people may feel a certain way but i know what i feel so that's also something you need to navigate that's one of the cons yes so definitely when uh, like the motive behind starting medusler was like uh, i was actively looking right from my first year what are the different avenues that yeah. beyond clinical medicine and that is how i started connecting on linkedin with different professionals absolutely here i thought to pursue this as a content creation and create a guide because there was a, a space uh, where the people were seeking for the information but the information was not available if it is available it was still uh, a very old so the fresh thing is not uh, was not still uh, there so I, yeah. that is the medicine started uh, it was more for me than for audience but now we both are integrating and we are building this uh, with my uh, more co-founders so yeah. So, sir, uh, can you summarize the personality of a, a student who want who can pursue MD community medicine? Okay, so I would say a person who is pursuing community medicine, he should be more creative. I would say because most branches have protocols. You're supposed to follow it rules. I mean, it's important because it's been got into so much research and things like that. here you have to be innovative you have to be a very good communicator uh you have to have a lot of patience and uh, you have to be um, i would say a little bit extroverted i think you do need to be you need to speak to people a lot and one day you may be speaking to a dean of a top medical college next day you may be speaking to small villager right uh, in the most remote areas so you need to be able to communicate your information very well should be a little bit more fluent and confident uh, communicating your ideas and uh, i think you do need that entrepreneurial mindset uh, because you are wanting to build something on your own where it might not exist 
out in the field so you have to create something and you have to give an idea to people and uh, yeah i think so a few things one is you have to be uh, creative you have to be bold you have to be extroverted you have to be patient and uh, yeah you have to be a person who enjoys not being the common everyday uh, label of what you usually do so a uh, med hustler you could call it <laughs> yeah as a traveling aspect like traveling aspects of it yes ah that's also there so it depends actually see even if i am a public health specialist it depends again it's a regulator thing man if you really want to do those kind of work you can see as a medical faculty you don't travel so much right but if you are in that kind of organization yes you do travel so that kind of freedom is there i would say it's not a absolute necessity yes it helps it definitely helps if you like to travel okay i think uh, you brought up a fair point people who like to explore new things who don't like to spend time within the hospital who like to see what the world is like i think that's a very very important thing and uh, yeah person who likes to be more street smart who understands what uh, subtle things sometimes a uh, you know a mother will not really say that uh, she is having some issue or not but you can kind of sense in their eyes only when you go speak to them more frequently right so it's that uh, you you need to have good eq emotional quotient so sir i generally think that doctors are better in entrepreneurship like uh, generally people who want to get into entrepreneurship they are looking for problem statement but doctors they are dealing with the problems every day so mm. what is your take like can doctors be a good entrepreneurs mm. Mm. i'll give you a differing opinion here i would say in my experience also i personally i would say entrepreneurship requires a lot of hard work so i think doctors can do it i mean they work so hard then they can focus because entrepreneurship requires a lot of focus so they work hard they're very focused and they're very intelligent as well um just that uh, entrepreneurship also requires a little bit of lateral thinking uh, creativity and being open to new ideas and that is something if a doctor can inculcate they'll be unstoppable sometimes what happens you are conditioned to just follow what is the what is the guideline what is the rule what are you supposed to do here um, you know no no doubt nietzsche will say think about it uh, you know just do your own thing because you can't it's a it's an important thing to have where you have to follow the rule it's like being in the army you can't be creative too much in the army or even in uh, you know proper care so you should not let it get to you for your creative aspect so having that creativity if it's there doctors can be really good if not it becomes a huge hindrance every every new idea they like okay what is the evidence here should be or should be not uh, they not too much risk taking i think risk taking is a part of entrepreneurship uh, that appetite to take risk should be there so sir can we summarize that uh, community medicine physicians are like a programmer of healthcare okay yeah i guess so we can be programmers of healthcare again uh, labels are a very difficult thing <laughs> yeah we can be we can be programmers uh, yeah i think uh, we can go with that uh, so sir this was more about the subject aspect that community medicine has to offer now we will be diving in your personal journey so sir let's go back can you walk us through your mbbs days and why did you offer md community medicine was it your first choice or uh, yeah, did it happen to you 